So we are at the Cyberneum of the Max Planck Institute for Biological Cybernetics, and this is our tracking lab. It's a bit like the holodeck in, in, in Star Trek, of course. If you've seen the old Star Trek episodes, they suddenly go in a room and it changes into, into like a virtual space. And this is a bit our, our uh, holodeck. This is basically a large-scale tracking space. This means you can walk around in this room and if we put markers on you, we know exactly where you are, and that's down to millimeter level. And if we know where you are, we know where your head is, we know where you're looking with your head, and then we can basically use that information to put you in a virtual environment. So where is I? My seat's here, isn't it? So you probably heard of HMDs like the Oculus Rift. The current version, they're only able to track your orientation. This means you're sitting in a chair and you can look around, but as soon as you move around or you want to get out of the chair, you'll be still frozen to that point in, in space. Okay, and now you basically, if you look around, you should already have the orientation tracking. And what I encourage you now to shift your head a bit left and right, because then you get something, this is what you would not get yeah. with the traditional DevKit one. You will get it then with the next version of the Rift, but only for a very small area. And we're doing it for a big area, that's a big difference. You start off in a chair, you can look around, and then you actually be able to get up and walk around. Now when you want to do that, you have to solve a couple of technical challenges. And, and one is, of course, a very basic one which we discover every day in our life, it's cables. What we've done in the past, we had quite cumbersome setups. The test subject was wearing a head-mounted display, a very heavy backpack with the video control units, and a laptop which was carried by the research assistant. And we were walking basically behind the test subject for one hour while they explored the virtual environment. Um, that was a very good solution at that time. It still had some limitations. For example, if you wanted to spin around very quickly, you couldn't do it because you know someone exactly like you have to run around, <laughs> around me. So uh, we wanted to take it uh, a step further and, and really simplify things. We have a very p uh, powerful PC that's connected to a wireless uh, HDMI transmitter. It's actually something for the home market. And we have here an Oculus Rift, that's the DevKit one. And then we have the wireless receiver. We have a little battery in there, and you notice it's super lightweight. It's really very comfortable. And then with this unit, I can walk around now in this room, and I'm suddenly in a virtual environment. It's an optical tracking system. So there are basically 16 cameras which send out infrared light. This infrared light gets uh, reflected on these reflective markers. So they're able to really accurately uh, determine the position of these markers. And then, since it's a fixed constellation, you can spawn a coordinate system and you really know where you are in space. It's exactly the same technology which is used by the movie industry to do motion capture for video games or big Hollywood movies. They then have these suits on with the markers. And you probably have seen that if you watch the making of, of some of the DVDs or Blu-rays, you see them when they do this uh, motion capture. And that's exactly the same technology. But we're using it for real time. That's a big difference. Hollywood collects a lot of data, they do a lot of nice processing. We don't have a lot of time to process the data. We need it as fast as possible in, your, in front of your eyes. That's a bit the challenge there. So we're not making Avatar today then? Not today, no. <laughs> I'll probably first show you what you see low level. So if we, if we go here and, and look at the camera view. Is this bespoke software? Or? This is a, a system from the UK, Viken. They're basically one of the standard uh, manufacturers for optical tracking systems. And this is basically what the cameras are seeing. They basically see this collection of points. And if you have more than one camera who sees that, they can reconstruct then the real accurate position in, in space of these markers. And that's what we're going to see over here then. So can you pretty much go anywhere in this room with that setup? You can go anywhere in this room and then you basically you see those markers and then out of those markers you're able to reconstruct the position in space and also the orientation. And this is the data which we then send to our VR system. This gives me the point of view and basically I use that data to define my VR camera. When you play a video game at home you use a mouse and a keyboard to change your VR camera, right? And he's looking somewhere up, down, left, right and moving and we're actually getting the real data from your, from your head position. And uh, in the past what we can do, we can put a big helmet on and here we try to simplify it a bit, we actually attach it to the Oculus Rift. So we use a bit of 3D printing technology too. We have a 3D printer in-house, so we designed a model that we can clamp that on, on in front of the Oculus Rift. And if something breaks, we can just remove it and attach it to another Oculus Rift, for example. And I can quickly show you, I just grab the Rift and walk around and then you'll see how you don't need any batteries, you just attach it to any object. We're able to track, you're almost up to half a meter away from the wall. 
Right now, the wireless setup, we do one person because we have interference when we have more than one wireless signal in here. If we don't use the wireless, if we just have maybe a cable solution where you have traditional laptop on your back, we could do like 10, uh, 16, 20 people in here. The tracking system is very powerful. They use it also to track uh, quadcopters, flying objects, and they've used it for uh, tracking up to 40 of these flying objects. And this space also allowed us to do research in the area of redirected walking, which means basically while you walk in a virtual environment, we gently rotate it and, and, and change things. That, we, that you think you walk uh, through a little village, you go straight left, right, but in fact you're just walking in a circle here, but you don't know it. And that's the stuff which we really, that's what our basic research is about. What are the thresholds? How fast can we, can we, can we fake this world rotation until you notice it? Until you, or where's the threshold that if below that you still believe that you are just walking forever uh, through a city, basically. When you walk one meter, we maybe just move you half a meter. And what's really powerful is also to manipulate rotations. So especially when you go against the wall and you make a 90 degrees turn, we can we can uh, we make can it like make it. Feel, we can actually make you turn more than 90 degrees, and you still think you just made a 90 degrees turn. And that's a bit the tricks you use then to keep people uh, in this space. And you can only do this research when you have a big area to to examine. So it's roughly 10 by 10 meters. And high this. The height is then, I think it's also eight meters or so, but we only, I mean, for the height wise, the, we had the camera set up, we only track roughly about uh, four meters high. The cameras, are they expensive? The high end model is basically more than 20,000 euros each. It's a bit like a Mercedes Benz. It's not cheap, but it's very reliable and that's important for us. My brain's telling me, I know that there is nothing here but visually, because I can see all these people around, that I do want to try and get out like this. We run our experiments sometimes for one hour. Imagine if the system has, a, has an error after 30 minutes, all the data is lost. And then you cannot rerun the same person because they've already been exposed to your experiment. So it's, for us it's very crucial that the stuff uh, runs reliably. And then powerful computers running behind the scenes as well. Yeah, but compared to the cameras, the computers are nowadays very cheap. If you look back in the times of silicon graphics, these computers were expensive. They were like a million uh, Deutschmarks or dollars. And now the computers are really cheap. It's a gaming market, so here we're just running a gaming card to, to do the whole thing. What kind of card is it? That's an NVIDIA, and it's not even the fastest. It's NVIDIA 760, so yeah. We're not cutting edge there. We don't have the Titan Black, but uh, for most of our experiments, it's sufficient. What's important for us, 60 frames per second. That's yeah. the crucial part for us to do correct VR. If you're below that threshold, you get sick. So at home, I was playing around with, uh, with a Second Life, and there was an alpha uh, viewer that you could experience Second Life in VR on the Oculus Rift. And, but I got a really bad frame rate, 20 frames per second probably. And I was really then sick for half an hour afterwards. If you are looking at the screen and it's not 60 FPS, it's fine. It's, you think it's a bit stuttering, but when you have it on your helmet in front of your eyes, you move around and it's good and suddenly you come in this area where you have the frame rate drop, it's uh, horrible. So we're using the Unity game engine. You see a lot of mobile games done with the Unity game engine and also a couple of bigger titles. But it's usually not the AAA titles, not, not like Call of Duty or so, but more like the, the indie developers who make smaller but, but nice things with it. And for us it's a wonderful engine because it really allows our scientists, who very often don't come from a computer science background, they come from psychology, that they can make an experiment in a virtual environment and they don't have to be experts in real-time 3D computer graphics. The second argument... They've added man in business suit levitating. So you have to go through endless thousands of stack frames.